This special program about Conrad is presented by the National Industry Advisory Committee in cooperation with the Federal Communications Commission, the Office of Civil and Defense Mobilization, and the Department of Defense. It is addressed to all broadcasters and civil defense leaders. It is particularly aimed at station managers, program directors, and chief engineers. This program will be followed early next year by a series of regional briefings by teams representing the FCC, the OCDM, the National Association of Broadcasters, the Defense Department, and the National Industry Advisory Committee, which hereafter will be referred to as NIAC. That's NIAC. NIAC has developed an interim general plan that is now in effect. Every FCC licensee has received a copy. NIAC also has developed a national plan that is nearing final approval. This will be distributed to all licensees. It will be your Bible, so it is essential that all station personnel thoroughly familiarize themselves with it. State industry advisory committees called SIACs already have been established in 46 states. Local industry advisory committees called LIACs are being formed. It is essential that the state committees move rapidly to assist the formation of local advisory committees. It is essential also that there be close liaison at the state and local levels between broadcasters and the FCC Conrad field supervisors and civil defense directors. Why is Conrad necessary? Here is an explanation by Commissioner Robert E. Lee, who is the defense commissioner of the FCC. You may be interested in knowing that the Conrad requirement has recently been re-evaluated by the Defense Department. And we have been advised that for the foreseeable future, perhaps 10 years, Conrad is a military as well as a civil defense requirement. This is not only to deny navigational aid, but to deny intelligence to the enemy and to deny interference to our own sophisticated offensive and defensive guided missiles. This is the official answer to the pseudo-civilian militarists who feel that Conrad has outlived its usefulness in the jet age. The point I wish to make is that in our field, yours and mine, our responsibility is to perfect a system that is officially a military requirement. Whether you like it or not, Conrad is and will stay with us for at least 10 years. I would like to report briefly on our 1959 Operation Alert where a selected FCC staff met at a classified location in the vicinity of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, together with some 77 industry members of our state and national industry advisory committees. This was by far the most fruitful exercise in FCC history. The proceedings have been reproduced. We are mailing copies to all stations, and I urge you to peruse the same. It will demonstrate what we are doing under the Conrad program in addition to the denial of navigational aid. Our objective is to provide for emergency use only alternate methods of communicating on a multiple basis using the existing non-government, non-military communications industry. All this at token cost to the taxpayer. We believe that this is a very worthy objective and precludes the establishment of a government-owned emergency network involving tremendous costs to the taxpayer. I would like all broadcasters to do everything they reasonably can to cooperate and or actually join in civil defense activities at all levels of government. I sincerely hope that history will prove that our efforts have been in vain. Our tasks in this area are not glamorous and certainly unrewarding. We are, many people claim, playing games for eventualities that may never ensue. Thus, they argue, we are wasting time and money. I hope they are right. The alternative may be total destruction. What we are doing is buying insurance to take care of an attack where communications is the number one means of survival. I often observe the firemen in my neighborhood sitting around waiting for a fire that may never come. I am not disturbed, but happy at the fact that vigilance and preparedness are waiting to put out the fire of war that we devoutly trust will never come.
The Conrad policy was formulated originally by the United States Air Force. For a statement on that policy, here is John J. McLaughlin, administrative assistant to the Secretary of the Air Force. I would like to say that Conrad is a military requirement. For the foreseeable future, the hostile man bomber threat requires control of high power identifiable electromagnetic radiation stations and devices. Should Conrad be discontinued during this period, we would be providing very usable aids to navigation and bombing for an enemy bomber force. Also, relatively simple direction finding equipment and missiles to home on radio stations would ensure the effectiveness of such weapons against our cities and industrial areas. Discontinuance of Conrad would be immediately known to the enemy, thereby simplifying his attack plans and navigation bomb equipment requirements. Notwithstanding that there exist considerably more sophisticated navigation bomb systems, radio direction finding is still a most useful aid to the basic navigation problem. Taken together, accuracy and ease of penetration to the target are increased. The denial of navigational aid to the enemy in the event of attack is a most important part of Conrad, but of equal importance is the strict control of all radiation devices which do not directly contribute to continental defense and necessary national operations. The operation of these devices should cease in order to reduce mutual interference associated with missile tracking and control, early warning, and defense communications. If those charged with the responsibility of defending the United States from hostile attack could be assured that the enemy would not use domestic radio stations for navigational aid, there certainly would be no need for Conrad. But this assurance cannot be given, and the fact remains that navigation and terminal guidance by such means is well within the capability of modern military weapons. There is no reason to doubt that an enemy denied the use of his primary bombing navigation equipment would rely on commercial broadcasting stations to release his nuclear stores on our centers of population. Commissioner Lee referred to responsibility. One of the most important factors concerning Conrad is the great responsibility of stations under it. The FCC has prescribed the following tasks for the State Industry Advisory Committees. They are responsible for maintaining liaison with federal, national, state, and local officials and organizations. Working under NIAC, they are responsible for developing a workable system for communications and dissemination of information to provide continuity of service under attack and natural disaster conditions. This includes the establishing, in coordination with NIAC, of communications priorities, authentication systems, emergency national radio network interconnection, and the development and activation of effective statewide emergency communications networks. The local industry advisory committees perform about the same functions, but on the local level. It is at that level that the closest cooperation between local advisory committees and civil defense is most essential. In an emergency, the public will tune to Conrad for all information. If there is not the closest coordination between the LIACs and local civil defense, the situation could be catastrophic. Last April 17th, there was a nationwide Conrad test. It was generally quite effective. It could have been even more so had all broadcasters brief themselves thoroughly in advance. There probably will be another test in 1960. This is to alert stations now to read up on the routines. Last month, a false alert was triggered accidentally in Wisconsin. It demonstrated graphically that many stations still did not know what to do in an emergency because they had not familiarized themselves with the interim plan. Had that been an actual attack, the result could well have been disastrous for radio. How effective is Connell Rad in reaching the public? The FCC analysis of the April test reports, quote, intelligible service extended to approximately 90% of the total U.S. population, unquote. That is not yet perfect but the entire Conrad system is undergoing constant technical improvement. 
the addition of more stations has substantially increased Conrad coverage. Many areas that were blank spots in April have been filled. The NIAC analysis of the test found that many of the blackouts occurred because eligible stations had not briefed themselves on the regulations and were unaware that they could join Conrad. When a Conrad alert is invoked, the official information is channeled through the OCDM and its state and local civil defense staffs. Under the NIAC plans, a system of priorities has been established to end the problem of how local civil defense directors and local Conrad stations can get vital local information on the air. The priorities are these. First, always first, is the presidential message. This is delivered by the president himself or by someone authorized to speak for him, such as the director of the OCDM. There would be comparatively few such messages. Second priority goes to the local messages from the local civil defense director and through him, the local industry advisory committee. Thus, aside from the relatively infrequent presidential messages, local information has immediate access to the air. Third priority goes to state messages, such as from state civil defense directors. Fourth priority goes to national messages. Uh, these include most governmental and military reports, newscasts by the network pool broadcasters at the relocation news center, etc. The problem of identifying specific streets or buildings or areas of cities is nearing a solution. At present, specific identifications are forbidden. But because such information is vital to local populations, the OCDM and the Defense Department are reappraising the ban and have indicated a substantial relaxation is possible. Mention has been made of close cooperation at the local level. Here is a message from the director of the Office of Civil and Defense Mobilization, Governor Leo A. Hoag. I welcome this opportunity to speak to officials of radio stations participating in this closed circuit broadcast. This remarkable radio hookup also permits me to extend personal greetings to the local civil defense directors who are guests of the stations. To me, perhaps the most important aspect of this nationwide meeting via radio is that it has created the opportunity for a radio station managers and civil defense directors to get to know each other better. Cooperation between them is a necessity in preparing for emergency. This meeting to discuss plans and operating techniques is one of the best ways I know to stimulate this cooperation. I wish to thank the radio TV industry and its advisory committee for making this meeting possible. At the conclusion of this broadcast, you will learn how radio can use the OCDM surplus property program to obtain equipment for carrying out emergency civil defense assignments. I know that equipment is expensive. I'm also aware that radio stations have spent a good deal of money to fulfill their Conrad functions. It's a fine commentary on the patriotism and the civic mindedness of the entire radio industry. In normal times, radio is a part of our everyday life. But in time of national crises, radio assumes an even more critical role in our life, a responsibility which can well determine how we survive as a nation. The importance of Conrad stems from the simple truth that radio offers the swiftest and most penetrating means of reaching an entire people. In this sense, radio has no peer. As you know, this closed circuit briefing is a prelude to face-to-face -face conferences planned for the months ahead. These regional meetings will give you a chance to bring up any questions regarding the surplus property program or any other aspect of Conrad related to the Office of Civil and Defense Mobilization. But the most important point I can make is this. If we are ever attacked, Conrad is the most reliable link we have between plans and people. As such, it is an indispensable component of our nationwide civil defense. Governor Hogue referred to a point of vital interest to broadcasters. 
how to get surplus government equipment to assist them in this emergency work. The OCDM has supplied the following information on this. Radio stations that participate in Conrad may get such equipment as emergency power generators and alternate Conrad transmitters through the Civil Defense Surplus Property Donation Program. The station must pay handling and transportation costs through the local Civil Defense office. These charges are relatively small compared to the original cost of the equipment. Title to the property does not pass to the station, but remains with Civil Defense, which acquires the property for assignment to the station. Station managers are cautioned that before accepting any surplus property, they check its condition. If it requires overhauling, possibly half the cost may be paid by Civil Defense under the Federal Con Contributions Program. If the equipment is not avail available from federal surplus, it may be approved for procurement under a program in which the federal government pays half the cost and the state and local governments pay the balance. Details on all these points can be obtained from local civil defense directors. What use is this equipment? It can be used both for Conrad and for the station's own purposes in non-emergency times. The NIAC interim plan provides for the transmission of programs. Transmission requires first line and standby or backup equipment. Under the interim plan, basic feeder circuits will be provided by utilizing one or more of the following as a backup to normal network landline facilities. In interstate traffic, industrial radio microwave grid networks, multiplexed FM off the air relay, AT&T Express routes, regional or state intercity remote broadcast intercommunication networks, and other means under development. Intrastate remote pickup broadcast intercommunication networks, studio transmitter links, television audio intercity relay, and industrial radio microwave. Intracity remote pickup broadcast intercommunication networks, normal program lines between broadcast stations, studio transmitter links, and facilities of any other FCC licensed service available that may be operated in accordance with FCC rules and regulations and approved Conrad plans. All these arrangements are local responsibilities. The interim plan requires that a prearranged routine for such usage be filed with the U.S. supervisor, Conrad. Station management should know that the FCC encourages the establishment of state FM networks, which, in emergency, could be used for Conrad. The FM rural radio network in New York State and the Florida and Massachusetts emergency weather networks are examples of this. These networks can be used for regular business as well as emergency needs. The remote pickup equipment and the FM networks, for example, can be important sources of added program material or news and weather. In Florida and other states that have disaster weather problems such as hurricanes, this equipment is invaluable in creating a weather warning and information system that is, in effect, a statewide peacetime version of a Conrad network. One widely desired program commodity is area news. It is both saleable and audience building. Stations on an FM network could agree to exchange news from their localities. This discussion has covered the broadcaster's responsibility under Conrad. They are equally concerned with legal liability. To discuss these points, here again is FCC Commissioner Robert E. Lee. The broadcasting industry as temporary custodians of very valuable franchises authorizing the use of portions of what I consider to be perhaps the most important natural resource belonging to America, the spectrum, has a unique responsibility to the people. Though the FCC is charged by the Communications Act with the responsibility of utilizing communications for the defense of our nation, this responsibility must rest ultimately on the industry itself. In a word, the individual broadcaster has a duty to the American people to see that the facility he operates is in a state of readiness should it be called to use during a national emergency affecting the common defense. I do not mean to suggest that the broadcaster should bear the financial responsibility 
for providing a defense-ready communications facility. Obviously, the costs entailed should be borne by the government. But the broadcaster must recognize his responsibilities in this area and must cooperate with the commission and the defense establishment, both civil and military, in the implementation of an overall communication system designed for the missile era. I urge all broadcasters whose stations are not now Conrad stations to become so immediately. By so doing, and through the proper cooperation thereafter with the duly constituted civil and military defense officials, you can more nearly fulfill the responsibilities that devolve upon a broadcaster under our system, which extols voluntary cooperation of individual businessmen to the exclusion of government-owned and operated stations. The Commission has not overlooked the problem of legal liability in the event of damage caused through the triggering of a false alert. A great deal of study has been given to this problem to date. Although there is a respectable body of legal opinion to the effect that since the broadcaster is acting as an agent of the government during periods when he carries radio emergency messages, and hence he is exempt from legal liability for any damage occasioned by such broadcasts. We, that is the FCC, nevertheless, will request the Congress to specifically spell out such an exemption in the Communications Act. In my opinion, this request should receive favorable reception as the Congress is very well aware of the part played by broadcasters in the overall defense picture. To sum up, we have emphasized that Connell Rad is an integral part of the nation's defense policy and will be for at least 10 years as reaffirmed by the Defense Department. There was a nationwide Conrad test last spring. Another is likely next year. NIAC already is seeking to have it scheduled at a time most equitable for all broadcasters, yet still in conformity with the objectives of the Defense Department and the OCDM. And finally, station managements must remember that under Section 606C of the Communications Act, which establishes the president's war emergency powers, the president, upon proclamation that a state of war or emergency exists, can close all stations, or he can take over all stations and communications, paying just compensation, or he can expect the full cooperation of broadcast licensees with a defense communication program such as Conrad. It thus is clear that if broadcasters want to retain control of their facilities, cooperation with Conrad is their only solution. Thank you for your attention.